Imagine, if you will, that one day you receive a phone call from the company that you're currently subcontracted to do work for. The HR department informs you that there have been allegations leveled against you. Nothing criminal in nature. And your accusers don't even work for the company that now has you sitting in their HR department. The crime you've committed is one of perception. You see, it seems you're being accused of being a serial dater, cheater, and immoral scoundrel. Each accuser believed that their heart belonged to you, and that your heart belonged to them, and only them. It seems, though, that the joke was on them, because they started finding out about the other women in your life. The HR department informs you of your options. Jump through your accuser's hoops and list of demands. Then, and only then, will your accusers allow you to work and sustain a living, or... Do not comply with their demands and continue existing as a social pariah. It doesn't seem like much of a choice, does it? Admit guilt where you've already proclaimed your innocence just so you can continue to eat and have a roof over your head. This is exactly the situation Warren Ellis has found himself in. On June 21st, 2021, artist Ben Templesmith announced on his IG and Patreon that he and Ellis were returning for the final arc on their creator-owned image series, Fell. This announcement was met with a tidal wave of cheers from their loyal fan base. It was also met with a tsunami of outrage from the usual suspects. It was a large enough storm front that Image Comics walked back their plans to publish the Ellis Templesmith book, issuing a statement, saying that the Templesmith Fell announcement was neither planned, vetted, and was premature. Adding, Image Comics will not be working with Ellis until he has made amends to the satisfaction of all involved. Yep, you heard that right. A man who has not committed a crime, or been convicted, has to bend the knee to his accusers, who are now acting as a quasi-parole board. The parameters of the Ellis Bizarro parole should scare the living hell out of any and every creator on every level of the comic industry. It's a very slippery slope. Appointing your accusers as a makeshift judge, jury, and executioner. Anyone who accuses you of anything, now owns you. They decide your punishment. And your publishers and peers are going right along with it. What happens when a group of accusers or accuser demands monetary compensation. The precedent being set here is frightening, and my theory is already starting to come to fruition. Former Warren Ellis Forum member Alex DeCampi already has a list of demands for editors. Publish more women. Hire more queer and Pac as editors. She goes on to say that white male editors allow abusers to continue. And don't even think about saying that the gay community and minorities aren't qualified or good enough. Because that just means you've exposed yourself. And you don't bother to read marginalized creators' work. See what I'm getting at? DeCampi got the jump start on holding editors hostage with her asinine list of demands. I missed the 2010 version of DeCampi. The one that was advising Warren Ellis on how to dispose of bodies. Where did the 2011 Alex DeCampi go? The one who knew that people who don't understand the gap between their fantasies and acceptable social action are psychopaths. I could even go for the 2020 version of DeCampi. The one who enjoyed the Ellis written Netflix series Castlevania because of its goat effing jokes. But I'll digress on the Alex DeCampi front. For now, let's shift to a creator who, in my opinion, has skeletons in his closet and an awful lot to lose going forward. Scott Snyder was one of the mainstream comic pros who came out and disavowed Warren Ellis, despite the fact that it was Snyder himself who recruited Warren Ellis for a 2020 DC Metal origin story, a project that DC canceled when the allegations surfaced against Ellis. Apparently, 
20-plus year industry vet Ethan Van Skyver has some inside info on the Comic Industry Whisper Network and their plans for Snyder. Van Skyver says the Whisper Network scares Scott, and Mags Visaggio has already accused Scott of emotional labor. Penny Parker revealed plans of the network destroying Snyder, and Heather Antos is already breathing down his neck. Ethan believes that the mob has Snyder on their list, and that he is next. The future of the comic book industry does not look bright at this point. In a now-deleted tweet, Savage Dragon creator Eric Larson asserts that companies are floundering and failing and says that upper management is threatening to close shop and stop producing new material and go to all reprints. If you believe Larson, an industry pro for 30 plus years, then the sky is falling on publishing. Mix that with the Whisper Network inmates who are now running the asylum. And what are we left with? As fans, what hope is there for ever getting good comics, free of ham-fisted socio-political drivel in our Spider-Man, Batman, Captain America, and Superman stories? You want my opinion? Look for a new hobby. Hope for the best, but expect the worst. And to the current year pros, going along with the metaphorical slaughter of Ellis, the clock's ticking. Your name is on their list. Save your money. Go back to school. Leave social media. And pray. <laughs>